Hello and thank you once again for joining us for another SCBA Reflection. Uh, today I'd like to, us to talk about uh, the power of words. Uh, I remember as a child um, my mum used to say to me, uh, sticks and stones will break my bones but um, names will never hurt me. Um, I think we can all relate to the bravado of those words but we also know equally that they're just not true. Uh, words can have a profound uh, effect on us. Uh, words can inspire us. Um, uh, words can encourage us. They, they can enable us to do things that perhaps we never thought possible. Uh, and right now it might be good just to think about the people who've spoken those powerful positive words uh, into our lives. Uh, words too can be soothing. <laughs> I referred to my mum earlier and I, I can remember on many occasions running in with an, another a bleeding arm or, or bleeding leg and, uh, and just listening to her a soothing voice. <laughs> a bit later on <laughs> she was also there uh, to use words um, that affected a broken heart. Uh, words that are just so powerful. Uh, they can stimulate us. Uh, they can energize us, uh, they can be used as a source of healing, uh, but sadly, as we know, they can also be used destructively. Um, they can discourage us, um, they can disable us, uh, they can even defame us. I came across uh, this in my quiet time just recently. Negative words create an atmosphere in which positive people cannot live and creative solutions cannot be found. Only in a climate of faith and acceptance can risks be taken, progress be made and dreams be fulfilled. That is why you need to pray today, take control of what I say, O Lord. A quote there from Psalm 141 verse 3. Recently I read uh, this from Francis Schaeffer. I've observed one thing among true Christians in their differences in many countries. What divides and uh, severs true Christian groups and Christians? What leaves a bitterness that can last for 20, 30 or 40 years or 50 or 60 years in a son's memory is not the issues in doctrine or belief which caused the differences in the first place. Invariably it is a lack of love and the bitter things that are said by true Christians in the midst of differences. These stick in the mind like glue. And after time passes and the differences between the Christians of the groups appear less than they did, there are still those bitter, bitter things we said in the midst of what we thought was a good and sufficient objective discussion. It is these things, these unloving attitudes and words that cause the stench that the world can smell in the church of Jesus Christ among those who are really true Christians. I don't know about you, I found that um, very challenging and uh, it encourages me and I hopefully encourages us to be gentle uh, with our words. It's your responsibility and mine to ensure uh, that we uh, try and protect unity uh, in our churches at all costs. In Ephesians chapter 4 it says, Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen. Uh, when I looked up uh, that verse and tried to dig a bit deeper into some of the words, uh, the word that's used there, unwholesome, uh, actually uh, literally means um, something that is going off, something that is uh, rotting, like decaying fish or, or veg or fruit that's going off. <laughs> I, I think what it's saying is, let's make sure that we give people with our words something that nourishes them, not give them food poisoning. Proverbs 12 verse 18 is right when it says, Reckless words pierce like a sword, but the tongue of the wise brings 
healing. wonder what you will think of uh, this article I found entitled The Most Important Words. It says the six most important words are I admit I was wrong. The five most important words you did a great job. The four most important words what do you think? The three most important words could you please? The two most important words thank you. The most important word we and the least important word I. As I read recently, words of peace are like seeds. They don't produce fruit overnight, but slowly, silently, they work under the surface, changing hearts, minds, attitudes and futures. So let us try sowing some seeds of peace today. Well, it sounds good advice uh, to me. Uh, and as we pray together now, uh, let us pray that uh, our words will be sweet. Our words will bring healing. That our words will bring life. Father, we thank you. We thank you for this remarkable gift of language. Um, for the ability to, be to use words. But Father, we pray that you might help our words to nourish, to feed, to heal. Uh, Father, if we have used words that uh, are not nourishing or helpful, then Father, we pray that you would forgive us. But help us, we pray, to resolve every day, to our, allow our words to be shaped by you and to bring the goodness that you would desire from each of us. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen.